Hello, I would like to provide this opportunity to give you a glimpse of what school might look like for the 2020-21 school year. We have a board meeting on Monday, August 3rd, in which as an ad team, we will be recommending that we go face-to-face -face instruction with all students five days a week. A couple reasons why we chose to go with face-to-face -face instruction one was based on a survey that we sent out to staff and families. An overwhelming response was, please try to come back to a face-to-face -face instruction if we can make that happen. The other reason is the obvious. Academically, it is a lot better for our, our students to be face-to-face -face with their teachers and learning that way than in any other method. And not only is it good for us academically, it's good for our kids' emotional, social, and mental health. So for those reasons, we hope to start the school year in face-to-face -face instruction, but in order to end in face-to-face -face instruction and have as few of disruptions as we can throughout the year, there are a few safety protocols that we're gonna be putting in place uh, to help ensure the reduction of risk. One of those is face coverings. We will be requiring all adults who enter our district to have some type of face covering on while they're within the building. That will be the same for our students in grades six through 12 at the middle school, high school. They will also be required to have, have face coverings on during the school day while they're in the buildings. At Winskill with our younger learners, with early childhood through fifth grade, we will be requiring them to have face coverings as anytime they leave their cohort classroom. So if they're in the hall for the restroom, for recess, um, to go to lunch, those type of things will be required face coverings for those students. The second is social distancing. We are doing everything we can to help ensure that social distancing will be taking place. However, we also know there will be some times when that is not available. And for those reasons, we will either have kids wearing face masks at the elementary if we know that's not going to be the case, or we will be having dividers put in place. And you will see some of those within classrooms as well as at the lunchroom uh, in order to provide social distancing or a barrier from one student to another. And the third thing that is important that we need to make sure to do is the continued practice of hand washing and keeping your hands from your face. So we have sanitation stations for hand cleaning everywhere within our building in classrooms, exit, entries, um, bathrooms, even our classrooms in elementary have sinks, so students have the option to wash their hands within the classroom as well. We hope that with those three main safety things this year, uh, we can provide an opportunity for our kids to come back um, and be safe with a face-to-face -face instruction. There are other methods that we'll be using as well in procedures, and those you'll see within videos that the building principals have put together. Keep in mind, the videos that you see were put together last week by our building principals, so the wearing a face mask and some other things are different than what I'm telling you now. Which gets me to a point of make sure that you understand things change daily. So although we might start the year face to face, that doesn't mean the next day we have to go virtual and parents and families need to be prepared for that. So please make arrangements for that to happen for you as well if we're face-to-face -face one day and virtual the next. And before I forget, for those families who just are uncomfortable sending their child back to school, we understand. And therefore, if we have face-to-face -face instruction in the fall, we will also be doing a virtual option for parents as well, in which you'll be live streaming the classes with the teacher, um, which will be about as good as being face-to-face -face with them every day. So that is an option for those families as well. A couple of questions that have come up to me that I feel I need to address is how we will notify the community if a COVID-19 case is found within our buildings. If we have that, that information will be shared or delivered um, through the Grant County Health Department. We will work together as how we need to best inform our families. We have to keep the personal uh, safety and um, personal information of people in mind as we provide that information. So we will provide as much as we can. It'll probably be in a letter format, but we will also try to get that information out to you as quick as we can. So I would suggest if you do not have the Lancaster Schools app, that you probably try to download that and put that on a device that you have, so that if we do need to send that notification home in a letter, we can also do that using our app, which would give you more immediate um, indication of where 
uh, we might have a positive case within our district. The other question that came up is how will you notify us moving from one form of instructional delivery to another? When that takes place, we'll treat that as if it's almost like a snow day with the information that we provide at that point and what we use. So we'll contact our local radio stations. We will also put it on our Facebook page, on our website, and again, we'll use our Lancaster app. So those are the ways of, uh, that we'll try to communicate as best we can and as quick as we can to provide you the information that I know you'd like to have. If there are anything else that you want to know or have questions in order to, to uh, have you feel safe to bring your kids back to school, please don't hesitate to contact me or any of the other administrators within our district. Our number one priority is safety for staff and students, and we feel that providing face-to-face uh, -face instruction is the best thing for them. And so to ensure that, we need to install as many safety practices as we can. So with that, Again, any questions you might have, don't hesitate to let us know. And I hope to see you and your children this fall face to face as we start the new school year. Thank you. Welcome back to school. The following video presentation is a short snippet of what potentially could be face to face five days a week for Lancaster Middle School and High School pending board approval. Just want to make sure that everybody knows that virtual learning is also a choice and possibility at Lancaster Middle School and High School. I would like to thank Mr. Callahan, Mr. Reynolds, and the students for making this video presentation possible. As mentioned earlier, Lancaster Community Schools will offer choices for educating their children. One option is virtual, and the other option is face-to-face, -face, five days a week, pending Lancaster School Board approval. If you choose to send your children to school five days a week, we are asking for your help with a health self checkup in the morning. We are asking families and students to give themselves a review to see if they have fever or chills over 100.4 degrees Fahrenheit, a cough, shortness of breath or difficulty breathing, they suffer fatigue, have muscle or body aches, a headache, new loss of taste or smell, sore throat, congestion or runny nose, nausea or vomiting or diarrhea. If they have any of those symptoms, please stay home. Contact our school health or school office personnel to report these illnesses. Lancaster Community Schools cannot ensure social distancing occurs in school transportation situations. Therefore, all staff and students will be required to wear face coverings when using school transportation. Hi, good morning everybody. Great to see you. Please remember to stay six feet apart. Reminder, masks are required inside the school, so put them on now. Thank you. Um, remember, when you go inside, use the hand sanitizers and please report the first hour immediately. If you need breakfast, that's fine. Head on over, grab your breakfast, and then you can report to first hour and eat breakfast there. Mask will be required when social distancing is not possible. Mask will be required in all places with the exception of assigned student classroom workstations and lunchroom seats. It looks like everyone is here and everyone's in their spots. If you would like to remove your mask, you may do so at this time. All right, before I get into my lesson, did anyone have any questions about last night's homework? All right, I'll help you. As you can see, all students face the same direction unless a protective barrier is in place. Masks are required if a student is out of their seat. Assigned seats do not change, and attendance is very important for the potential of tracing situations. All right, great work today. Everybody is class dismissed. Remember to stay six feet apart when you leave. Have a good day, everybody.
Students will use hand sanitizers upon entry and exit of the classroom. We also have spare bottles available. Teachers will spray down chairs and desk at the conclusion of each class. Students carry backpacks with supplies for the day. Traffic will flow in one direction following signage. When in doubt, stay to the right. Masks are required in passing times. All students need a written pass from school personnel outside of normal passing time, regardless of reason. Students can leave to use the bathroom. There will be only one student leaving at a time. The student must have a written pass from their teacher and masks are required. The students will eat lunch in two shifts. The freshmen and sophomores will eat first. Both commons will be used for the high school. They will seat five to a table and be staggered across from each other. Clear dividers will separate our students. The middle school will be eating in the middle school gym, five to a table, and staggered across from each other. Again, we will use clear dividers to separate our students. Cleaning up tables and chairs will occur between lunches. When students are not eating, they will be in homerooms. Students switch between homeroom and lunch. Masks will be worn in line and upon entry and exit of the lunchrooms. Masks may be removed only to eat, hand sanitizers are available, and bathrooms will be monitored for social distancing. Distancing will also be required in lunch lines. The Zoom Room is designed to help with our larger classes as we look to create more space to distance in the classroom. Students will be supervised in a larger space such as the Commons or Auditorium. Students may come from different classes and Zoom with their class. Students in larger classes would rotate so as to receive as much instruction in person as possible. Students not comfortable in the classroom setting may also voluntarily attend any hour they choose. The middle school and high school conference rooms will be used as COVID-19 symptom rooms. The nurses room will keep the same purpose for non-COVID-19 health concerns. We will have visual monitors installed for safety as well as curtains installed for isolation and safety purposes. Visitors will not have access to our buildings. The offices will be closed to all non-office personnel and plexiglass barriers will be installed to allow for envelope exchanges. Students must take their backpacks and Chromebooks home daily. This will make an easier transition in the event we need to switch between educational models. Social distancing is required upon exiting the building. This video highlights day-to-day -day activities and modifications to our school day. There are certainly improvements to be made and adjustments for safety will be ongoing. Please feel free to ask questions. We will do our best to try and answer them.